Hello, welcome to Telling Tales. Here we do atmospheric role play and put them for you, put them out there for you on tw Twitch and YouTube. Sorry, I just got horribly flustered because right in the middle of my countdown, like 30 seconds before the thing was going to go, my stream yard crashed, which isn't very fun. But now it seems to all be okay. I hope it's all okay. Let me know if it's not all okay. Seems fine. Um, yeah, tonight we're going to be doing some Warhammer <clears throat> Excuse me. Warhammer fantasy role play. So uh, it's going to be me and a few other folks playing up again. Sorry we missed last week. Had a little bit of stuff going on. We're back into it now, and I can't wait to get going. So before I get going, though, let me do a few notes of what we do at Telling Tales. So uh, yeah, first of all, check out stuff down below. Uh, we stream here on Twitch, doing all sorts of stuff. We also put stuff on YouTube. You can check our links to uh, our social media and Discord and other bits and bobs below please join and get involved it's always nice to have folks nattering away uh we also do a few other weekly series as well as this warhammer so there is into the odd on wednesdays and there is world of darkness usually on thursdays but i don't think wraith is on this week so that's a world of darkness series spanning all sorts of different things and wraith is going on at the moment i can't wait to watch those i haven't quite kept up and i'm really excited previous mage one was a lot of fun so looking forward to the next session um and we also do one shots every month. The next one of those is going to be uh, Merc Borg returning to. Yeah, I was in that one. That was fun. That was <laughs> returning to uh, the really kind of dark and it's hilariously messed up. I think one would say um, play, uh, place that Merc Borg is set in. Oh, really? How much there is lore there actually behind that setting was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that's I think two weekends time. So please join us for that as well. We do one of those every month. But without further ado, let's get to some Warhammering. So uh, first of all, I think we were going to bring on John. I'm pretty sure we were going to bring on Steve first. No, no, I think. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Let's walk around. Bye, John. You go away. I'll bring on Steve first. Oh, it... that makes sense. Look, Hello. I have good cause to be flustered. My thing crashed. Like, just yeah. that's perfectly flustering. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. We we were yeah. There was a slight uh, moment of anxiety. Was, was that, that just stage. me? Was, was it fine for everyone else? It seemed to be fine. Yes. That, you know what happened to me? So the countdown just stopped, and it just changed. It changed the Telling Tales logo, just flicking up repeatedly, oh, wow. and I had no countdown at all. So it seemed like it was a stream glitch rather than me. But apparently, it was fine for everyone else. So whatever. amazing. Anyway, uh, Steve is playing Kruger, our kind of uh, traditional warrior sort, perhaps uh, brave. Uh, son of uh, the Stark family seems a bit like a noble, isn't from uh, the northern lands of Middenland, but maybe maybe seeking to be a noble or at least uh, someone of, of of some stature and name someday. Eh? So, why don't you tell us what was going on at the beginning of last session? Sure, so yes, things uh, things started off uh, last time with um, the head and upper torso of a gigantic, a sort of um, bowl like. Uh, beastman crashing through the uh, the double doors that the, the um, barricaded doors of this uh, the temple of Sigma that we were um, that we were in uh, and yes uh, combat uh, kicked off in short order um, Kruger yelled uh, to his uh, servant to Boniface to go and grab a, a shield from the store in the back room um, and meanwhile uh, we all attempted to uh, to attack it. Uh, Kruger managed to get in a, a fairly good hit early on. Um, Okri was was holding the door um, the longest until the beast just sort of burst through, uh, knocking him over. Mm -hmm. um, Kruger managed to dodge a really quite serious axe yeah. uh, blow, which uh, still without shield, I hasten to add. Yeah, um, yeah. Spo spoilers for our little intro session, but everyone got quite lucky that time. I must admit, yeah, we discussed it afterwards, and that monster <laughs> could have, uh, if it did well with its role, easily one hit killed any of you. So uh, yeah, it was fairly convenient that it didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so so yeah. So Boniface rushes off to to, to grab some gear, mm -hmm. um, manages to fling a sword towards Henrik. Uh, who was stood at the, uh, the the pulpit in this temple with a sling, um, merrily aiming slingshots at this beast, uh, and, some and of which others. hit. Yeah, <laughs> and others, yeah. Um, yeah. Father Stillman was was again doing his best, but uh, failing to land any any conclusive blows. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, one of the slingshots attracted the beast's attention, and it turned and 
charged towards Henrik. Mm -hmm. Did indeed. So why don't we bring on Henrik then to describe what happened next? I mean, if you're sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, Henrik is our uh, human rat catcher from the city of Reichland. Perhaps a little bit of a conspiracy theorist as well. You can see from those eyes there staring into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what happened next, John? Uh, so Henrik grabbed up the sword that Boniface had uh, left him and got one quite lucky blow to the giant beast, uh, which ended up felling it quite successfully, um, which sort of put all the glory towards him which Boniface soon set to re, uh, re-attributing <laughs> correctly or not to his master. Um, and Henrik decided to... Um, well, at first he carved the tail of this beast off as some form of trophy, and then he decided to nail... Well, my description was leaving it on the barricade by the front door, Mm -hmm. uh, in the hopes that the smell would deter further attacks. But in our recap, Sam described it as nailing it to the door, and I like that because it has quite a, a Martin Luther reformist feel to it, <laughs> as if I'm protesting the the beastman's religious edicts and just, <laughs> just nailing a tail to the wall. They're all there, like, staring and pointing, like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, not sure about this Henrik fellow. <laughs> um, uh, well, if I say it is canon, so that is officially what has happened now. <laughs> um, cool, yeah. So uh, next, let's bring on... I'm hoping I get it right. I think it was Justin next. Um, Justin, who is our... Mm. Uh, well, the, the servant of, of Kruger and uh, our, our young and uh, bright-eyed and uh, enthusiastic... Mm. I'm slightly terrified because a rather large pigeon is eyeing me from a fence. <laughs> and, <laughs> not in the room, uh, right? Like it, it's just staring right at me, so I'm a bit on, right. my, on edge. Um, yeah, no. Uh, well, as as uh, John said, Boniface was correctly establishing the narrative. You know, mm -hmm. establish the narrative, shape the truth. You know, that's 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 uh, really what it's all about. As the PR slash servant slash bodyguard slash getter of things for Kruger. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, so doing a, bit of, doing a bit of gossiping, going around, and then we, um, in that in that journey, we had been pointed towards a young uh, a young woman or a little or girl who had uh, believed herself to be somehow responsible for these creatures arriving. Mm -hmm. We followed up that lead, and Boniface, with Kruger standing only slightly menacingly behind, and uh, the rat catcher, stinkily by his side, uh, <laughs> chatted with the young woman um, to talk about uh, what she thought. And basically, she had been wandering around for unspecified, potentially illicit, potentially innocent reasons, the camp of uh, Baron von Hausknecht, and had, while passing by his tent, overheard the strange talking of an old man, or an inhuman voice, perhaps, uh, that was talking about the Baron and uh, talking about how to get him to do things. They talked about doses. They talked with repeating words. And this uh, girl reported such these, these strange these strange goings on to the town and uh, to the village and then later to the town. Uh, but nothing has come of it. Or perhaps what has come of it is these monsters, and that's why she's so uh, sad, slash upset, slash feels responsible, slash guilty. So mm -hmm. that was all ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> you know, surely nothing to do with that. Um, and that's that's really where we left off for, yeah, from, from Boniface's perspective. With the uh, with the uh, interesting intrigue stuff there, yeah, indeed. Obviously, this could be well be something to be dismissed as the uh, the fears of a child. But equally, it is very common in well, this this world to be uh, to have that kind of uh, myth that if you know something and if you talk about something, then it kind it of kind of can come to get you. You know, it can be dangerous. Yeah. So. Depends well, how your character might view that. Let's not bandy around child too much, given that the average age of the party, ignoring the dwarf, <laughs> is about 
four. <laughs> <laughs> or it feels like it. I think Henrik was in his, his 20s, right? Uh, the old man Hen of the group. I think he's 23, but I can't yeah. check my character sheet because the portraits are in the way. Basically yeah. dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because you reduced the age of Kruger down to 19, didn't you, Steve? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, it felt more... Uh, more realistic yeah. if Kruger's just a, a raw recruit. And Boniface is only like 15? So, 17. 17, sorry, 17, not quite that young. <laughs> Isn't he I think... 17? No, I think he's <laughs> I think he's 19, but, oh, okay. uh, but like actually 17. <laughs> I think Uli was about... Actually 17. Uli was about 15, so fair, uh, I can see the point. You're, mm. you're mistaking his, his age, which you think to be comically small, with his height, which is actually comically small. <laughs> actually the same as Okri. Speaking of Okri... <laughs> We'll bring on our final player, Johnny, who plays Okri, the unusually tall dwarf. <laughs> Still muted, Johnny. Oh, mute. Who is 59 years old and uh, and yet That's in like some ways younger than any of the humans, yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, so yeah, at the at the end of last session, uh, after all of that excitement, um Okri took up position at what was once a door. Um and is now a hole. Um, <clears throat> uh, just to keep an eye on if any any other creatures were planning on coming inside. Uh, spotted a group of Ungor kind of along the way. Um, kind of shouted at them. You know, a sort of uh, aggressive... Um, go away unless you want to end up like this guy who's loads bigger than you. <laughs> um, and then uh, spotted a single Ungor in the ruin of a building um, that looked to be trying to hide not only from us, but also from the other group of Ungor, uh, which um, Okri kind of checked with Kruger as our kind of resident... <laughs> Beastman expert, whether that was expected behavior, um, which obviously it isn't. Uh, and then um, a figure walked towards us uh, from outside, larger than the Ungors that we fought, but not as big as the other creature, mm -hmm. um, with tall horns, flowing robes, and a long staff held in one hand. Uh, which um, shouted humans at the building, and then we ended the session. We did indeed. We did indeed. Now, before we start, I have a check for you, because I didn't note it down for everyone. Did we barricade the door, or did you not? Was it completely open? I can't remember. We, I, I... we tried to um, barricade it, like the gap with... Um, pews and things to try yeah. and fill in the hole a bit. Yeah, that was after. Yeah, after everything. That so there is some amount yes. of barricade there. Mm -hmm. Cool, gotcha. Um, yeah, I didn't know that. That's all good. So you can still see through, obviously, and uh, I'm sure that the creatures outside can see you. It's not like it's blocking visibility, but it would be a challenge for someone to just walk past there without dismantling it somewhat. Cool. Well, why don't we start with the image again? Then? And I can actually zoom in a bit. There we go. And uh, yeah, don't show these tips again. Let me just share the damn screen. There we go. Okay, you can put me on there. Cool. So, um, indeed, you're you're looking out, uh, Okri, But I feel like the rest of the party are probably coming over. Certainly, at the sign that something is going on. I mean, it is it's a striking vision. You know, mm. right? Standing there outside of the uh, the sacred temple of sigmar not too far from the entranceway looking straight in at you is this uh visage of uh horror uh this this large beast man probably a little taller perhaps perhaps similar to kruger's height i imagine kruger's quite a tall man perhaps just a little taller than kruger um uh, but stocky and uh looking different from the rest wielding some sort of what looks like perhaps a mystical staff or something uh, a little better equipped with kind of richer looking items than the others and staring straight at you. And yes, as I said, they go, humans! And then they look 
and smile kind of unpleasantly at Okri at the, at the entrance and go, <laughs> and Stantes! Rude. This is just rude. I am Kresok, Soul Flayer. I speak for my gods. Much blood has spilled this day. Yours and ours. The gods smile. Enough to satisfy all the Kogra Ark. Enough save for one. There is a man, his life I claim. Send him out. Give Klaus Balk to me, and I leave you your lives. Inside the temple, there is some looking around and confusion, and people are weeping, crying, shocked. No one is looking at any individual right now. I think a few people are perhaps looking at Father Stillman. I imagine the group kind of turn around thinking, we don't know who this is at that moment as well. And then this creature identified itself as Kresok. Set continues. You do not challenge the Kogra Ak. We will find worthier foes. The tribe moves on. I remain with only seven, my trusted guards. I wait, wait for Klaus Balk. I will not wait long. As long as this torch burns, you breathe. Save yourselves, one life for many. And with that, the uh, creature in front of you stabs a kind of uh, torch into the ground, which has a, a, a crude candle of, of fat on the end, and lights it um, with a flick of their finger and stands back to watch you all just staring. If anyone would like to judge how long the torch will last while staring at it right now, they can indeed do that. Make an intelligence check. Or you can immediately reply if you like. I mean, I'm just saying the intelligence checks, it's probably an instinct to think that. Yeah, I'm going to make that roll. Yeah. Plus 20. Uh, yeah, passed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, you reckon you've probably got about an hour. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be like... 30 seconds or something. It's not a Roman <laughs> candle. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently, yeah, this creature is giving you some time to consider. It's probably the shortest, the shortest candle you had on him. <laughs> <laughs> All my other candles are too long. Oh, I've, got this, <laughs> I've got this whole bit planned, but I've only got this one really long candle. Uh, it's going to get really uh, awkward in about 50 odd minutes. <laughs> Just... <laughs> yeah, it's just a four-hour candle. <laughs> you know, we we kind of made our decision. No, the candle. <laughs> anyway, oh, <God. laughs> so he he says there's him and seven others with yes, him. Yes, and you can see them now. Uh, they're kind it's... of coming out of the mist a bit behind in the darkness. Um, you probably saw the shapes of moving before, but now you can see seven. Um, Do they look pretty tough? They're, they're similar to him. They're larger than the young girls. Um, I'll tell you what. I could put a picture of them up too. Oops, sorry. I should stop sharing. I do that. Um, uh, yeah, they're larger than the others. They look more formidable, better armed, better equipped. Um, but it's worth also saying that while uh, you can see them moving out of the mist towards you, it seems like the rest of the creatures, the uh, Ungors that were here, are moving on. So what he was saying about that seems to be true, unless they're just tricking you and only going around out of view, which is perfectly feasible. I can, you can just put that on screen now. <clears throat> Oof, that'd look De definitely okay. tough. quite formidable looking. Uh, yeah, large and chunky uh, battle scars. Are, the, yeah. are they bigger than the the previous bull? No, creature, they're not of anywhere they? near that size. They're right, they're okay. human sized, bulkier but human sized. I I do notice the uh, the the, oh, the, the head, head for scale. Mm, yeah, head for scale. And the could have been a giant's head, guys. We don't know. <laughs> okay. Does anyone um, immediately reply to uh, no? Chris? We oh, have I'm no idea who door. that is. To Kresok, that he identified himself. He said it, the creature. He did, did say it you. many times. I... Henry probably wasn't listening. I was listening. <laughs> um, I say out loud, we have no idea who that is. <laughs> uh, do you say it? Are you saying it loud enough? You're not whispering it. No, I'm saying it to him. Okay, cool. I think uh, there's like a turn of the head, and then this creature just goes, He is here! Bring him! 
and like stamp mm. smashes his, his staff down. Um, if you any of you do turn around, you would notice Father Stillman is rushing towards the back of the temple to the cellar. Cool. All right. Well, I'm fairly, I mean, like, to, to, to the rest of the group, I'm, you know, cards on the table. I think this guy should die. You know, like, you know, we should give him up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it seems like a no-brainer to me. I think I know where this is going. And um, there is, as this is going on, unless anyone else is immediately saying or doing anything at the front, there's a bit of a scuffle almost at the back of the temple. And you see uh, a large, well, not he's quite short, but quite rotund. Uh, middle-aged man uh, coming up from the uh, cellar where now you're thinking about it you haven't been down there but it looks like there were quite a few people down there because there's other people following him up as was quite sensible given what was happening um and uh it's clear that he's been kind of not quite dragged but certainly um encouraged out of the cellar and father stillman is waiting for him at the top um and he uh pushes well looks at um uh, Klaus, who is looking very confused, and then starts to usher him towards the front of the temple. You're presuming this is yeah, Klaus, anyway. Good. Um, anyone who is still at the front, could you also make me a perception check while looking at this creature that's been talking to you? This is a regular, so no modifier. Challenge one. Pass. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I got the opposite of a pass. <laughs> uh, a fumble that was then. Oof. Well, I got ninety six. I think that is a fumble. That is, yeah, fumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After last week, well, so <clears throat> yeah, uh, rules checking. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, yeah. I. Uh, this was plus twenty, right? No, nope, zero. Oh, uh, then I don't. <laughs> okay, I fail. Uh, what am I going to give Ocri with that? <laughs> um, Ocri, you're convinced that the the staff that this creature has is for show. And it doesn't have any mystical abilities at all. <laughs> um, the craftsmanship is rubbish. Yeah, it's clearly just trying to show off and pretend. It's like know? some kind of beast man made this. <laughs> um, Henrik, you notice they're wearing this. This creature is wearing something extremely odd around its neck. Uh, it's a small silver amulet shining slightly in the torchlight. Um, and the amulet is in the shape of a hammer. Interesting. And is that the, the central one that's talking to us? That's Kresok, yeah. yeah. It is the hammer that you would expect to see someone who worshipped Sigmar wearing. So either they stole it and chose to wear it, or it's come from somewhere else. Interesting. Can I... I don't know whether this would be too obvious mm. you say the other rungles are packing up and leaving yeah you can't even see is, them now at this point i think is there any sign of the ungor that was hiding in the ruins across the way you could make me another perception check <laughs> if that's what you're thinking yeah i think it's going to be another challenging given the, the other no stuff modifier mm. well um i rolled a nine so that's another pass Ooh, very cool. nice Cool. Uh, yes, you see it is still there. It's now drawn further back into the, the rubble. Now there's some uh, some of the larger creatures, these ones, standing quite close. Bring that off now, eh? Um, um, but uh, it's still there, kind of peeping over one of the uh, uh, fallen beams of a, a ruined stable, I'd say, I think I said, next to the, uh, the tavern. Interesting. It has not left. Assuming no one is saying or doing anything else, then quite quickly, um, Father Stillman walks up to the front with this man who you presume is Klaus and says, Did you? Did you? You didn't tell me anything. I didn't believe this could be possible, Klaus. I didn't believe. Klaus is looking very uh, pink and worried and upset. And uh, Father Stillman points at the creature and goes, Surely not. Surely. Can't. Tell me, Klaus. Tell, tell me this. This is not. Klaus is basically remaining quiet and looking. Go. I'm going 
to step towards them, join <laughs> their quiet conversation, and say directly to Klaus, tell me what you did. I think I will, yes, I will step over as well if I... Uh... I think that's an intimidation role. <laughs> I imagine it's doing like a double pincer mm. converging on. <laughs> I will give you a and plus then, ten for Kruger's help. So I'll be the one going leaning over the head going, yeah. Like I'll give you a minus ten control. for Boniface now. <laughs> I've got good I've got good skills. Um Ocri's gonna stay at the door, I think, just in case this thing doesn't keep good on its word, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh actually there's one thing I wanted to do for them as well, but go on, roll your dice. Uh, yeah, John. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend a point and yep. and re-roll that one. Yeah, it's all good. You, you've <laughs> re got your your um, thingy back, haven't you? Fortune? That's still a fail. Yeah, fortune. It's not a botch, which is the important thing, because uh, it's only the plus ten modifier, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, no. I was gonna plus twenty as well. It's not particularly difficult to intimidate him. So, so plus, plus thirty. 30. Mm -hmm. We have we have just killed a. Massive, yeah, exactly. It's lying there on the ground, right? Like, not far away from you. <laughs> um, I think Klaus, who is literally shaking and, and profusely sweating at this point, just goes Ugh! and then kind of collapses. And his he's crying into his hands for a moment and goes, He's 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 he's, he's my son. What, or he was. Wait. This Klaus continues between sobs. For anyone who knows a bit about the Beastmen, Kruger, you may understand this. One of the, I, no one else probably does. Mm. One of the places that Beastmen can come from is corrupted children, corrupted babies. Okay. Um, if they are not correctly disposed of, um, can end up as such. Very cool. Not cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going it's... mostly, um, that was the one I meant. Right. <laughs> I don't. Was this how he was born like this? Well, yeah, yes, I suppose, with horns and cloven hooves. I I knew I knew it was a curse, but what was I supposed to do? I I suppose I should have killed him or handed him over, but he's my son. My only son. I guess I'd hope in my cowardice the forest would do the job for me. I see. And the mother? She, she died just not long after he was born. Human, though? Yes, yes. And you're sure it's your child? Yes. I... Uh... I don't know. What do you want me to say? I, I think and he cries some more. Why? Why? Why now? I don't know. It's not. I didn't ask for this. Mm. I'm surprised a human outcast has reached that level in. Uh... In, in Beastman society, they usually they don't look down on uh, on human outcasts. Mm, so, surely, uh, maybe something so corrupted, so vile, has got special magics. That's why he's so powerful. I don't know. All I know is that Sigma wouldn't be happy. How would this abandoned child know that you're its father? I I don't know. Did you leave it with a token? An amulet, perhaps? Yeah. Yes. But how, how could... I mean... I just wanted him to go with Sigmar's blessings. That was all. That was all. Spooky Windows chime. Cool. <laughs> oh... Look, I mean, Bonifast is really like, you know, we've got corruption, didn't do the right, the, the, the godly thing, and, and you know, yeah. as you're, as you're thinking, the child at birth. 
Still, uh, as you're thinking this, Father you... Stillman just just kind of mutters and goes, oh, Klaus, why did you not tell me? I could Since... have helped you. All you had to do was tell me. I thought you trusted me. You put us all in if... danger for this. If there's corruption in the child, it must have come from one of you. Klaus is like kneeling now. Uh, and, like weeping some more. What do we do about the creature outside? And the creature is still outside, just staring at us, just right? Just staring. Not far away. Perhaps 15 <laughs> feet from the entrance, really quite close. I think, Ok, by the way, I was going to, I made a roll for, for him earlier. Okri, you're standing at the front. You see uh, uh, Kresog looking, gazing around at the temple and then seem to eye something and then do a kind of goatish bleat of anger and then go, that on the, on the, Door, you you mock us. <laughs> Can I kind of <laughs> lean and do I do I know what he's talking about? Yeah, you can see it. You um, watched me do it. Yeah, you oh, tell yeah. Roderick did. Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> the tale that Henrik put up, by the way. I, I, I mean, I, I find it hard. Oh, he's so offended that he did all that. All that thing was going to do was kill us. And how, how did we repay it by disgracing its corpse? It wouldn't have done that to us. It just would have dragged our entrails back and forth. Down yes, the no, and you would be pissed <laughs> about that. It pissed up the other way around, you know? Fair. We didn't thing. start this war. After do, you, you like... do you reply or do anything back, Ocri? I'm not. Or are you just I'm looking? Not I'm going to literally change nothing. <laughs> you hear like a low growling rumble in its throat and it kind of shuffles like hoof to hoof and slams its staff a couple of times but doesn't make another move and you hear like one of the beast men behind like huff and kick its, see it kick its head but nothing else happens if you wanted to make a big deal out of it he should have, wait, he should have done that before he lit the candle <laughs> uh, so yes back to you Father Stillman and Klaus on the floor Father Stillman is saying, uh, what are we going to do about the, the beast, though? I have half a mind to just hand him over. Doesn't seem like the holy thing to do, though. <laughs> do you think it would really save us? The beast hold to its word. That's my worry. Couldn't hurt. Kruger? <laughs> Sorry, I'm being put off by my ridiculous servant here um <laughs> i've never met a rat that keeps when's that promises, when's that so... smack coming <laughs> <laughs> exactly come on oh. <sighs> so yeah i i i'm just kind of lost at this point because like this is totally brand new behavior i think in terms of yeah you didn't even know they could speak. Um, you certainly wouldn't trust one, but you didn't also think they could speak, so you don't really know what to go on. Mm. They are, after all, agents of chaos and fundamentally linked to um, the Dark Gods in their um, uh, mutations and malformations, so <laughs> their word means nothing at all, as far as you can see. <laughs> You do realize, Father, that if you had kept this man in the cellar, there was a chance we could have made them go away, yes? I did not bring him up. The people heard. They ah. dragged him out. They're worried for their own safety, aren't they? Any sort of hope in this dire time. Yes, perhaps we could have done. Perhaps if it was just us, that was possible. That's not what the, we're living now, though, is it? No. Speaking of any hope in a dire time, it sort of seems like there might be someone across the way that has a differing opinion on the circumstances. Oh, the... the one, the one Ocri spotted? It doesn't seem to be a part of their group. It's not leaving, at least. Okay. 
if we talk quietly, are we out of earshot of... Oh, yeah, where you're talking now, you're definitely right. out of earshot, unless it has some unusually acute hearing, I suppose. But as far as you would perceive normally, you'd be out of earshot. This conversation, it probably couldn't hear. Is there another way out of this church, this temple? Uh, the the cellar has a door out to the back. Um, no one has left it yet for fear that the creatures are all out there, but we could perhaps escape through there. I I doubt they wouldn't. I doubt that they're not. They're aware. They're not aware of its existence, though. It's not exactly particularly hidden from the outside. Hmm. Well, perhaps we need to. Well, we can't get out the front. At this so, point, I think Klaus, having weeped for quite a while, kind of crawls slowly on up to his knees to look at you all and goes, "I'll, I'll, I'll face, I'll face him. It's, it's all I, all I could do now, I suppose. Just, just let, let me go." Well, there is no guarantee that uh, that it would be sated. Regardless, we we, we have an, we have an hour to make the decision as well. No rush. I mean, why would why would you be so important? Why would one person? There's no reason to this. I suppose I abandoned him. It must have been difficult to get where he was, where he is now. Whatever's left of anything human within him. I imagine would begrudge that abandonment. Wow. Before this day, I'd not heard Beastman speak, let alone with reason. So this is very much uncharted water for me. I think at this point, as you're all discussing, um, Elsa, the uh, uh, kind of head of the militia of the village, who is, uh, she's patched up, wrapped up an arm a bit. She took a small wound in that previous fight in the splintering of the door. <clears throat> she's been kind of hovering for this conversation, listening and uh, watching, um, steps in and just goes, the beast is there now. Perhaps we can, perhaps with a few lucky shots or a distraction of some sort, we could take it down. I bet the others, without their leader, they wouldn't. They wouldn't fight, right? If we could just kill that one, suddenly and fast, before they can react. Maybe that's our best shot. Perhaps. Although we don't know the. Uh... <sighs> we could do with. We could do with more eyes to see whether there are any uh, hidden. Kruger, I will give you this. Mm -hmm. uh, you have fought Beastmen enough to know that they are fiercely like led in a tribe by a chief of some sort. And if that chief is killed, there is immediately a power struggle for the next chief because there's yeah. no reason to do anything, any action, unless you're led by a more powerful individual. Um, so her logic is sound. It seems like if Kresok were to be killed, this threat would at least temporarily abate. I'd be I'd be willing to go and um, sneak out the back if uh, if help. I don't know a if a distraction. Looks... No, to go and to go and question this figure to go and see what it's doing. I don't know if Hemrick or Okri. Ruger, if you feel like you're, uh, you know, I, I'm used to wandering the streets at night without getting caught by my mum. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you get caught now, uh, Boniface, uh, well, I never met your mother, so. Uh... Oh, she was a fearsome one. Glance towards the beastmen out the front. <laughs> <laughs> She'd have them. <laughs> uh, 
flashbacks to the uh, the place that Boniface keeps telling people he's from. <laughs> Was it Draken Draken something? Drakensburg. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Def- definitely back Drakensburg. <laughs> I think Elsa, without anyone telling her not that it's a bad plan, has started to go and find someone with a bow. And uh, uh, I think she's found one person with a bow and one person with a sling in the room, yeah. in the kind of the rest of the temple. Uh, and we have stuff in the way, so we can't. Did Boniface ever find that oil? Mm-hmm. I was getting a shield. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a yell for oil. Um, um, no, no is the answer. I'm, I'm no. going to roll for a random. No, nah, that's too high. Well, you have not seen any oil anywhere in the damn it temple. Jump, you're muted. Are you You're attempting to unmute, John? Just... Ask oh, um, Father Stillman mm-hmm. if there's some for the, the candles and the, not the candles, but the lamps. Oh, little. Not enough to make a real fire. Just uh, a few full lamps loads, really. I don't, I don't think there's much we could do in combat with it. But I'll gather it together if you like. What are we going to do with this one first, though? I want to well, I think Elsa turns around and goes, I care not. Throw him out if you wish. Seems like he deserves it. Uh, it seems oh, like yes. a few of the people in the village are nodding along with this thought. <laughs> he is your citizen to protect or not, I guess. I think uh, Father Stillman sighs and uh, shakes his head slightly. And then uh, Roak goes, Aye, a, f- a fine distraction he would make. What does Okri think? I ask loud enough for Okri to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and too awkward for him not to answer. <laughs> Wanna bet? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, kind of turns like still trying to keep one eye out of the door. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe moves a little bit more into the room so that he can speak without, you know, he thinks being overheard by Cressock. Yeah. And um, says, I um, we could use him as bait. Put him Aye. just outside the door. Aye, Get Krezov Krezov closer. <laughs> Rorak agrees. I think uh, Klaus looks at you. Uh, although he's willing to give himself <laughs> up, the suggestion of being used as bait does, doesn't sit particularly well with him nonetheless. But he looks around for anyone who seems to be suggesting he shouldn't be. Gives us more time for the others to react. Do what we have to do. Elsa nods and says, yes, the closer we can get the beast, the easier the shot will be. Do we not want to investigate this figure in the dark then? Perhaps if we can keep, we have an hour. Perhaps if we can keep, uh, keep them talking. Somebody can uh, can can slip out to potentially find more information. I don't I don't want to. I don't feel we can trust these. But then again, yes, I don't feel we can trust any of these. Like, why on earth one would be lurking? I mean, if if um, this is just a long a long shot, but if mm. they're, they're all gone apart from this seven and all those seven are in front of the church, can't we just get everyone out the back? <laughs> Do you have any cardboard? Can we cut out sort of cardboard figures and then the the entrance is kind of the the to the side at the back rather oh, than right. the back back. Right, so fair enough. It would oh, be difficult to get oh. out without being noticed at all <laughs> if you if you're completely silent and like fifty of us. Can't we rush seven beastmen together? Probably, yeah. If all fifty were joining in. 
I suppose. I mean, you, well, in a straight well, fight, you think there's probably a fair chance that all of the all of the folks here could definitely take them, assuming there's nothing else going on. Yeah. But could we rely on all of the folks to take part of the fight? No. Many of them are wounded. Quite even a few the of them are You couldn't even get the soldiers to take part in the last fight, never mind the <laughs> cheesemonger and the it, se the rest. it seems like Boniface, uh, no one is making you go outside. It seems like it's up to you. Like Ridiculous. You Ridiculous. Ridiculous. There's only one person who can, can't maybe do anything. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, in which case, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to volunteer to go, I think. It's okay. gonna be, because it's, although it would be fun, uh, mm -hmm. it's needlessly dangerous. Mm -hmm. In that case, I think, unless anyone else says anything for a short time, Klaus kind of just gets up and goes, right then? Where, I think, where I, think I would, I would uh, stride to the front and say, yeah, how, how can we trust you? What? You attacked without provocation. You've, you've killed many of the citizens of this village. How on earth can we even begin to trust trust your kind I think uh, the creature shrugs were you going to say something before or during that John? Uh, Rick? during as Kruger goes over and engages in conversation mm -hmm. I'm going to lean over to Boniface and say keep them talking Cool. and then I'm going to slip out the side door <laughs> nice gotcha cool cool um Kruger, uh, the creature takes a moment to kind of twist its head again and then shrugs and then just goes, what choice do you have? Boniface <laughs> is going to go over. I think Boniface will... Is it, is it Klaus, isn't it? That's the Klaus, name of the yeah. guy. I think I'm going to bring him closer to me, like, like kind of like, I'm like, kind of just because I'm quite funny. Fast is reasonably big, despite being small, mm -hmm. and Strong. he yeah, probably yeah. would would maybe like wheel Klaus over mm -hmm. and make a big shot, maybe wave his arms <laughs> dramatically. <laughs> this guy, this is the guy you want. Ridiculous. This is what. This like, is your right, John. This is what. It, for, far enough inside for. the door that um i thought that, that he you know he'd have to come into the church if he wanted to grab klaus mm -hmm. but enough for, for him to like to me basically be going this is the one you this, right here this is where i want you looking kind of yeah, thing okay i um, think and uh, basically uh, saying yeah ra you know rambling on body fast is yeah. rambling klaus tries to like resist you and Ridiculous. get out of your grip but not to run away just to kind of stand there and look at the creature um yeah do you hold him if he's like just standing there I think I'll probably have have like a hat, like like still have like a firm grasp on whatever clothes he's wearing, so he can't yeah, yeah, all good. foolishly all good. run in, run off mm -hmm. um, until until I want him you, to. <laughs> you you see Kresok uh, take like a single step forward and like stare kind of intensely at um, Klaus, and Klaus uh, looks back with a, a shaky a shaky expression. Can I go? There's a family resemblance. You're both pig ugly, and try and jeer. <laughs> Is there, a, is, there an, is there like a kind of like jeering roll? <laughs> you try uh, a charm roll and try and fail. Uh, yeah. yeah that would be <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I use charm to do the opposite of charm? I mean, it's going to be very difficult God. to charm this thing. So yeah, sure. And I'll give you a minus 20. Or, 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 like, can, I, can, I, can I use the Insult. charm roll and, 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 and just do it as a, as a jeering roll instead? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that. In that case, it's going to be... It's gonna be. A, I think it's gonna be a zero challenging because I don't think it's a particularly easy creature to actually actively insult. Cool. I rolled. Uh, I succeeded, and I rolled uh, two successes. Two success levels. Oh, two success levels. Very nice. Okay, so I think uh, you realize that uh, the greatest way to insult this creature is to insult its strength and pride at its its abilities. Yeah. So you want to say the, the... what a soft. <laughs> cowardly individual yeah. Klaus is and how much yeah. you resemble that. Like yeah. like this this flabby individual no doubt is the father of this weak armed <laughs> sorcerer. Couldn't swing a sword if he wanted to. That's the that's that's the that's what we'll go for. I think I'm gonna <laughs> roll for the creature. <laughs> Find out how it reacts. Like that, I'm gonna be pointing at that candle. Ah candle <laughs> give us an hour. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Um, I don't know what Kruger's going to make of this, with, other than being somewhat shocked. With with Klaus right in front of of him, and uh, and uh, being thoroughly insulted by Boniface, Kresok growls and then lifts their staff, and you see a kind of strange. It looks almost like um, uh, you know the you know you. Heat lines where the where the kind of you can see and it looks like the world behind is shaking. Yeah, but that's like mm. in a circle around the tip of their staff and the tip of their other hand. Is anyone acting immediately? I'm diving to the floor with Klaus perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I... worth saying. Go on, sorry. I'm wondering whether I've experienced magic before. How commonplace is? It's not very common, uh, but you've travelled, so I think. Maybe you have a vague idea. I think everyone can probably assume what it might be given the mysticism sort of thing of the character too. Go on, Okri. Um, since Okri thought that this was just basically a cardboard staff, <laughs> <laughs> what are his chances of twigging what's happening? <laughs> I think you you're delayed in what you might figure out. So you maybe you're just like uh, you look at that and you go, wait a minute. Surely that can't be. While well, everyone else is definitely already jumped to the conclusion that it is what's happening, if you see what okay. I mean. You're just going to take a moment longer to twig that. Um, and Henrik's probably just exiting the uh, the uh, back thing. I, Henrik, I want you to make me a, uh, a roll anyway to see if you're spotted. Um, so let's see. Stealth, that will be. Um, and we'll see how you do, because that's about going on about now. So I have stealth and a specialization of underground because I'm not underground. Mm. Which one do I use? Is it just uh, the base and not my skill? Yes, I believe it's just the base. Okay. And technically, you just came from underground, but I think that would be pushing it. <laughs> but the sneaking is the not underground bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, what what modifier? Uh, oh, honestly, that's a pretty good distraction. So I'm going to say... And it's dark. Yeah, it's dark. Um... Uh, is it going to be a plus? Yeah, I would say plus 40. This is an easy stealth. Cool. Uh, in that case, my brain has frozen two success levels. Two success levels, cool. Um, yeah, you can dash off to like another ruined area of building just across the way from the temple, and you're kind of out of easy sight line from these creatures, so you reckon you could move around as you want to. Uh, a quick glance across to where the other thing was, because you kind of clocked it and knew where it was briefly before. Um, you can just see it hiding in the rubble. Now you're out of the lights. And it doesn't seem to have no noticed you either, as far as you can tell, okay. if that was your intention. You also see Kresok's staff in the air, something going on. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm going to let them deal with that. Okay. <laughs> um, it's worth saying Elsa inside the temple is uh, basically, she's got a bow and she's yelling at someone with a sling in these few seconds, but someone else might have a chance to act first. Well, I guess, I'd, yeah, I'd be getting out of the way if I suspect there's any form mm -hmm. of incoming blast, whether that, yeah, like whether that's ducking behind the door or dropping prone or something, whatever's most... Uh... Sure, sure. Has anyone else got any particular actions? Boniface, you said you were just leaping to the floor with Klaus, right? Cool. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okri, you're on the front door. Um, go on, sorry. Can I make a dex roll? Because if I have less time to react, that can be like my reaction. I, I was going to give you a, a roll in a moment. I was going to say the, the second the arrows fly, you can have your roll because they will fly before cool. anything else happens. Um, yeah, so in that case, uh, Elsa is going to take a shot. And it's a pretty tricky shot, but she's pretty good. And she rolls real bad, so that's not going to hit. <laughs> she doesn't have um, uh, the... I can't remember what it's called. Fate. Fortune points to Fortune, spend, yeah. So she cannot do that. But there's also someone with a sling who's not quite so good. Oh, let me guess. Who rolls a 94. <laughs> So, uh, in the darkness through the windows uh, nearby you, I think one the fling bounces just right up against one of the braces you put against the window. Elsa's arrow does go through, um, but it flies clean past um, and, and clips off the tavern roof in the distance. And you hear the other beastmen roar behind Kresok and start to rush forward as well. <laughs> this is oh, what happens is... when you taunt, 
taunt a beast. This is a great idea, Pony Fast, by the way. Yeah, it was a great, great, great distraction. Yeah. <laughs> a very effective distraction. Hey, look, Pony Fast just needs <laughs> to be pointed in a direction, and then he will <laughs> like. There's no ramp up. There's just full. Oh, God. Ocri, give me a. Uh, I think it's more of an initiative roll actually than just dexterity. This. Oh, that's worse. Ooh. Great. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so it's plus, plus twenty though. Plus twenty. Cool. Uh, the plus twenty means I pass. Yep, you're good. Uh, just so, one success level. At, at the moment the arrows are flying past you, you realize you were wrong. Krizak is doing something pretty damn dangerous, and you better either charge right at him or get the hell out of the way. Uh, in that case, I'll charge right at him. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Whatever's happening, it's got to be stopped, right? Yeah. So Krezok has kind of just started uttering some strange words. You don't know what they mean at all. They don't even sound like words. They sound they sound like they don't really exist properly, but you can still hear nice. them. It's a very strange sort of feeling. Um, and uh, yeah, you get a charge. So I'm going to say you, because that was your decision, you can be there before anyone else because the, the other creatures were a bit far back because Krezok had walked forward towards the temple. Uh, because of, uh, what's his name, Klaus being brought to the front. Um, so, let's give you a charge. I'm just bringing out my combat rules. But basically, that's just a plus 10, I believe, to your um, regular attack. So that's going to be weapon skill. Roll for you. Uh, and we'll do an opposed. Yeah. But I'm also going to give him a minus 10, because he's currently in the middle of casting. So that's a... which effectively is for you. So that's a plus... Yes. So he's got he's gonna have a minus ten in total and you're gonna have a plus ten in total to your roll. And it's successful cool. versus each other. What's his weapon skill? Sorry, Wait, is that on top is that skill. on top of my charge, sorry? Uh yeah, so uh no, sorry, just your plus ten for your charge. He gets So I've got a total plus skills. ten. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he rolls in the, in the middle. Mm-hmm. What'd you get? How many success levels? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good face. You could always use a willpower. Wait, do you have a fortune? Yeah, you do, don't you? Did oh, you yeah, I have one. You could you? Uh, might be a time to use it. <laughs> uh, no, I used, used it last time. Week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I used it last week. Got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's not great. Uh, I have 48 in melee, and I rolled 84. <laughs> okay, well, he also failed, but he only fell by one success level. So I think uh, you charge at him and you just don't, you, you basically just batter into him with your shoulder and don't really make contact properly with your with your hammer. You kind of, not really slipped, it's mucky out here. You haven't fallen completely over, but you just didn't get what you wanted and you just kind of yeah. knocked him. Nothing really succeeded. You're right at him now, um, but that's as far as you've got. Um, Kruger, I haven't really given you an action, to be fair to you. So if you want to charge as well, um, you're basically the last action before. Oh, Jesus. Okay. If you want to. I'm not putting um, any pressure on. This is very cruel of me. Isn't it? <laughs> well, I guess it, I guess if I see Okri going over, then mm. um, I'll I'll mutter to to, to Boniface. I'll have words with you later, um, <laughs> and then yes, I guess scramble over the uh, um, the, the barricade and mm. uh, and charge as well. Yeah, sure, sure. So uh, plus ten versus minus ten. Plus ten on my combat roll. You made oh, such a good roll. <laughs> Oh no! Don't tell me that. So I have to get under sixty-five. Yeah, that's pretty good, though. I oh well. What? I get one. I get one. Oh. oh, that's much better than he got two success levels. How many? I mean, you've immediately got lots of success levels there, haven't you? So that's yes, that's six minus zero. So that's six success levels. Yep. yep. Wow. Okay. Damn. So uh, yeah, you decisively win that hit, um, and that's going to be myself. Lot, that's going to be a lot of damage. So he doesn't have any armor, so it's just going to be uh, your weapon damage plus your six success level. Yeah, so it's um, six plus minus four, four plus three. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thirteen minus four for his toughness. So you so you managed to do nine damage. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Um, and what was the uh, so that's a zero, correct? Is the zero um, hit, reversing it would be 10. Oh, yeah, 10, of course. Yeah, yeah. so that is uh, I do, I did have it close to hand and now it's moved away. There we go. 
10. So left arm, although it's going to be pretty bad. So basically, because this is a wound thing, I should stop saying you managed to chop through because that's unfair. <laughs> but you basically like um, you've, you've slashed and hit and it's like it's kind of like a, a flesh wound, but it's all the way down his arm. It's bleeding a lot and it's like clearly badly injured. Um, and he's like completely knocked off balance. And I'm going to roll to see if he can continue the cast because that was a hell of a lot of damage. That's going to be, I think, a challenging roll on what's his... Okay. His staff is was in that arm. You hit that arm. His staff just drops from his hand. And the weird kind of fizzy uh, kind of uh, wavy thing going on around his hand and his staff immediately stops. Uh, and Kresok uh, collapses to one knee. Uh, I'd say it's yelling. It's less of a yell and more of like a, go a loud, deep, goatish bleat. Um, in pain and now you're right up close both you and uh kruger um are uh, can smell the stink of the creature i think it's time we went into combat rounds so john do you want to bring up the uh combat round image um, depending how things go we might not need it too long we'll see <laughs> we might might need it for a long time <laughs> do you mean we might not need it for long because we'll all be dead <laughs> <laughs> um cool so uh, first of all, is Elsa. Uh, I think she's... Sorry, you're going to say something, John? Nope, it's fine. I'm just mumbling that this isn't how I did it last week. Uh, oh. So it's fine. Uh, yeah, first of all, is Elsa. Um, she is already in position with a bow and arrow, so she's going to take another shot. And I think two people have charged Kresok, and he's not bigger than a person, so I don't think she can see Kresok anymore. So I think she's going to take a shot at one of the onrushing uh, other beast men. Um, oh, gosh, she misses that too. Um, it's clearly dark and difficult. Um, she's rolled 280 so far. Um, so now is Kresok. Okay, now it's time to look up a thing in the book because he has cool stuff. Sorry, folks. That's Please. not good. Just, just give me <laughs> one moment. That, that, if anything, that's terrible. Maybe he doesn't need the cool stuff. Maybe he could just be dead. I think he does need the cool stuff. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. One, how many wounds did he take from... Nine uh, wounds. Nine wounds? Yeah, I know. Mm. That's a lot of wounds. Uh, and also, do those pre-combat rolls count for advantages? So does Kruger have an advantage? Yeah, I think that's fair. So Kruger will have one advantage. Yeah. That's the nice. only one, isn't it? Uh... Uh, so the uh, the creature turns to stare at you, Kruger, um, and and a, a stray. I think like its eyes lock with yours as you're kind of in combat with it, and everything else seems to just kind of freeze. And it's suddenly everything like the whole world has this strange blue pinky haze to it around you. Nothing really seems to be moving. You you're kind of although you're fully conscious of like time passing you you can also feel like you're kind of still slowly flowing through from your strike despite oh, the fact that you can think actively it's like that everything else has slowed down except this connection between you for a moment and you find yourself almost panicking at it um uh and you suddenly that ends and you don't notice any particular effect Something strange happened. You're not quite sure what it was. Okay. We're in combat. Spooky. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what, well, I don't think that bodes well for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now it is Boniface. Um, I don't. Oh God, God, uh, uh, I'm going to get uh, this Klaus. Mm -hmm. out of the way and draw uh, maybe like, I probably have not brought the spear up, it's probably lying back somewhere in, on a pew or something mm -hmm. so draw my dagger yeah, sure, are you charging at the creature then? I think I, I, I'm going to get Klaus out of the way, like maybe like behind the doorway or something, into an mm -hmm. alcove so he's just out of the out of the way okay, that's cool. what I'll do, yeah, and draw a weapon, and so draw kind of weapon. Ready, ready to go next turn Gotcha, gotcha. Makes sense. Cool. Okay. Uh, Henrik. Sorry, I'll, you're busy, John. 
Ah. You're doing a good job there, by the oh, way. No. I have to vamp for a bit whilst. Right. It's fine. Okay, I'm good. I'm here. Hello. Um, I'm going to. Ah, oh, but it's all turned into combat now. Mm, I know. You you know it's turned into combat now from where you are. You can clearly tell what's going on. This is very definitely combat. Mm-hmm. Don't worry but about also, it. Also, I don't know if I, I saw Kruger get a really good hit in. Oh, you've heard some yelling and stuff, but I don't think it's that obvious, no. You can tell Kruger and Okri have, ch- have charged the thing, but you don't know what's happened otherwise. They're fine. I think yeah, Kruger we've moved past his... any form of diplomacy. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to uh, draw my sling and uh, oh, set okay. Rinder on on the leader. Get! You Get. won't be able to... You definitely can't reliably hit uh, the leader from here with your oh. sling. With Okri and Kruger around, there's, there's, you can oh, vaguely yeah, see them, but you're on the far side from where you are. You could easily hit any of the other creatures. Um, or you could try and do something else. Rinder is dashing off. Uh, Rinda, circle. And I'm going to try and do the same thing that we tried with the Ungors, mm, if sure. you can try and distract some of them. Sounds good, sounds good. And I'm going to fling a rock at one of the other beasts so that they can't, or so that they hopefully don't defend their boss. Go for it, go for it. Okay, I think you're a bit of a distance here, so I'm going to say it is flat. There's a group of them, though, so I'll say it's flat. You're, you're not plus or minus. Okay. It's still raining and mucky out here as well, though the rain's abated a bit now. Um, I think by this point in the night, actually, it's kind of... Uh, the light is almost just starting to return to the sky. It's kind of been quite a few hours now, so... Zero on both dice is 100, isn't it? Yes. I'm spending my last point. <laughs> no, I, I think zero on both dice is... Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's no yeah, one. Yeah, right, you're yeah, right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, which I hit with one success level. Cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah. What's your weapon damage? Plus six. Plus six. It's pretty good for slinging there. Yeah. Uh, one success, so seven. Uh, and reversing, I hit on the. Thank you. Head. No. Head. Ooh. Oh. Left arm. Left arm. Okay. We seem to be arms. Um, yeah, you whack one of them in the shoulder. Um, and it takes three uh, three wound damage uh, just on one of the creatures, and yeah, you get your advantage. I'm po- pointing at the screen in front of me, like you can see it. Because <laughs> there's seven, seven. I've divided this into eight. Yeah, just put a cross on that last one so we don't think it's eight. <laughs> what if you um, throw another one at us? Yeah, true, true. I mean, that would be my <laughs> big surprise now, wouldn't it? But now you're really not expecting me to, you see. <laughs> That's right. Um, Father Stillman is uh, still somewhat shocked and wasn't armed at the point that you were having this conversation. So he's going to dash back um, to where his spear is leaning against a wall inside the temple and turn around to ready uh, back for the combat. Uh, the dwarven woman, uh, similar, she wasn't. She was armed, but she wasn't uh, like ready to charge out. So I think she's now up at the door, um, kind of just about where Boniface is with the knife. Uh, Okri. Um, just take another swing. While you're here as well, it's worth saying, you notice something strange happened to Kruger. Um, he swung and he hit the creature real, really well, and then he seemed to kind of hesitate after the swing. And he's kind of looking, staring at it in a kind of odd way now. Um, you're not sh- maybe you're not really sure what's going on. Maybe maybe everything's absolutely fine. You don't think any of it, anything of it in the moment, but something odd occurs to you about it. But I imagine you're going to swing nonetheless. Uh, yeah, I might kind of questioningly half shout Kruger's name mm-hmm. while swinging <laughs> and see. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, Perfectly reasonable. So uh, we'll do the opposed roll again. Uh, it's a. I'm gonna say it's no modifier now for you. I'm still gonna give him a minus ten. Oh, you got a ninety-four. Uh, I got a fifty-six, so I okay. failed by one. Now we've had this before. Is it if you actually if you fail but you've had more <laughs> success levels, I believe you've actually won and got the hit. I read this. 
And I thought, oh, that's quite cool. It's the competitive success levels that matters. You just don't get any bonus damage because you haven't got a number of success levels. You see what I mean? So you have succeeded at hitting him because he failed to defend. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, if someone wants to double check that rule for me, that'd be great. But I'm pretty sure that's right. It's in the combat section when you're talking about rolling um, the opposed rolls. Um, but yeah, I believe you hit. Uh, so what's your weapon damage? Uh, my weapon damage. Um, oh, I get minus one success level as well because of my imprecise. Doesn't so, matter at this point. Still yeah, it's still enough. Better than like uh, know, minus six. <clears throat> weapon damage is plus strength bonus plus four. My strength bonus is four, so it's eight. Eight. Very nice. <laughs> so he takes four damage. What was, what was his uh, health on? It was nine. Okay. Um and. What was your reversed roll there? So I know where you hit him. Uh, 65, so body. Body, excellent. Okay, so you've just whacked him right in the middle of the sternum with that hammer, and the breath has left the creature as it kind of crumples. It's already, it was just getting up from one knee, um, but it's still standing and still staring at Kruger. Okay. Rough. So... Uh, let's see whose turn is this next. It is... Uh, hmm. What if Okris? I'm just thinking about it. See, I didn't... No, that's unfair. Uh, what? yeah, now it's... Do you want me to change uh, the initiative? No, 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 no. I'm just... I, I, I was thinking if maybe the, the Beastmen could have reached Okri and Kruger in their running, charging phase, but I can't wreck on myself now, so that would be unfair. Kruger, <laughs> ha! Kruger, you have a roll to make for me. Right. Could you please make me a uh, willpower roll? A willpower roll. Okay. Yeah. Just flat. Okay, willpower. That's not great. Yikes! Um, no, I do not make that. Mm -hmm. Uh, 91 over 35. This creature in front of you is definitely your friend. <laughs> oh, God. But you're really in a... Co you're, you, you thought you were fighting something. Yes. Yeah, so you better hit something. There's only one other thing in your vicinity. Oh, jeez. Pretty sure that's like this. What was, your, what was your willpower success levels? How, how, what was your, like, problem? Um... Well, it was <laughs> willpower was thirty five. The roll was ninety one. Ninety one. Um, that's a fair amount have, of success levels. Yeah. I mean, I have I have points to reroll. Um, or this might I'm, be a time to reroll. <laughs> yeah. I mean, alternatively, I do have another point to resolve. Which uh, is this a psychology effect? No, this, this doesn't count psychology. I'll try a reroll because that wasn't great. You see, that's better. I rolled a fifteen there. Mm -hmm. I think that was worth a reroll. Yes, um, you feel you feel as something. It felt like there were tendrils in your mind, and you you kind of, of you almost have to physically hack at them, but within your own brain as they're reaching out to to tell you things that you don't believe. Um, those eyes were 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 digging into your brain somehow, and you really feel like this thing needs to die now. <laughs> <laughs> I will sort of growl and shout corruption, and mm. uh, yes, then uh, take a swing. Yeah, Are there any ahead. skills for, for... Is it just roles? I'm get, I've played so many RPGs recently. I, don't I mean, know like talents are some more. talents and some other... It's basically if you have special weapon classes, usually I there are almost certainly well. don't at the moment. But not at this point. We're all super yeah. early level. Well, you're going to get tons of XP at the end of this. So. If we survive. Right, so on then. Last part, so that... Did that count as an opposed roll? Uh, no, that was something different, but this one. Okay. Was the last one an opposed roll? When, when the last turn... Did yeah, Okri like should have removed uh, advantage for that fail, I think, because then you have to keep hitting every every turn. That's right. Okri. And Okri, no, Okri did hit last turn, so Okri would have got another advantage. No, I meant Kruger's on his last turn when the the thing presumably cast the. Spell. No, that the... wouldn't affect advantage. No, cool. That's separate. It's combat advantage. If it had taken over, it probably would have. I suppose. Go on, Kruger. Okay, so uh, was the combat roll flat in this case, or was it... Yeah, flat for you, and minus one for Kresok, which means it gets minus six. Wow. I'm okay. guessing you beat that. Uh, yeah, so I rolled a, a 55. Um, I had advantage of two, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, just uh, one, I think. Just one. Oh, You're sorry, right, one. one yeah, one on right. Okay, so that was sixty-five. So yes, yeah, success level of of one. Okay, it's so crazy. what's your weapon? I mean, I know it's enough. <laughs> Eight it wasn't points a, of damage, I think. It yeah. wasn't a double, was it? So okay. Um, oh no, it was a double. It was fifty-five. It was a crit. Was a double. We get a dramatic, dramatic end. <laughs> we might get a dramatic end. Or oh I no, I hate the so, so we were looking That's this up we... before the game. If you get a critical <laughs> hit, apparently it means the damage you do from the the actual weapon and the roll don't count, and it's only the critical hit. Damage, yes, you, you which means you could just re-roll. Yeah, you could quite often do significantly less damage by dealing a critical hit than you would by. The, and I, I that doesn't make sense to me. Like, <laughs> it's surely it's got to be a good thing, right? But the critical hits also have like status have effects. Wounds, but them, a lot right? of them, yeah, they do. But a lot of the critical hits have wounds. They do, but some of them are zero and one. So you're still doing like no damage. So it feels weird that you've gone from maybe doing eight damage to someone by a wound of so a normal kind to doing two damage by knocking them gently on the head with a critical. It's like, no, that, why would you want a critical then? Hmm. Anyway, anyway, gripe over. If you don't, if you don't get the kill with this, I might have to be too mad and change the rule. <laughs> um, what what would, well, what was your crit? Um, well, shall I roll 2d100 and let you know? Yeah, you go ahead. So the location is 15. Mm -hmm. There we go, critical tables. So 15 is... Uh, oh yeah, I need to get my location table up as well. I think that's head, isn't it? Oh god, I've got so many things uh, open. 15 is the left arm, I think. Left arm again. <laughs> 15 only for that left arm. Mm -hmm. Go on him. Uh, and the critical roll is uh, 66. Ooh, that's pretty good. So that is four wounds damaged artery. Um, so yeah, you've just gone right for that bit underneath there. Oh. It's cut underneath the arm and there's blood just gushing out of the creature. Um, and it moans and wails and takes four wounds. And at that, uh, it collapses into the ground below you. The muck splashing as it lands and uh, immediately the other creatures which were mere feet from you charging at you um, I think one of them is actually going to just batter straight into Okri because it was already moving fast enough but you can tell in that split second that Kresok died their perspective on this was changed they don't care anymore they were led Oof. by this beast um, so Okri give me an endurance just because that seems fair uh, no toughness. I don't know why I'm saying endurance. Uh, flat. I have endurance of 48 and I rolled five. Oh, wow. Oh, endurance of skills. That's right. Uh, yeah, 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 you're fine. Um, so you, it batters into you. You just hold your ground and you're kind of like Hur! as it hits you and it like falls almost over and around you because it kind of goes over and then just keeps running. It turns to the side, yelling, and just goes, <laughs> and then just screams off into the forest. Three of the others in the center immediately just turn upon each other, one with a great war hammer. Most of them are wielding weapons that look like they're uh, uh, made by the creatures themselves, kind of stone or um, uh, perhaps wood even, or like bone. Some of them with crude bits of metal as well. They perhaps scavenge from things like part of a breastplate wedged into an axe head sort of thing. But this one has a, a fine two-handed hammer that's definitely of human craft, perhaps even dwarven craft, um, with runes or some sort of like marks craft on it anyway you don't quite recognize. I won't say runes because that means something else. Um, uh, and it whacks uh, one of its... Uh, momentary moment a moment ago allies in the face and you see jaw and teeth crack out with a bleating sound uh, as two of the others leap upon each other and start strangling each other in the muck and the final one runs off in the other direction away from you you're all kind of stood staring stunned in silence for a moment not sure what to do unless anyone has an immediate action let me know that's fine um as you watch these creatures literally tear each other limb from limb um until there are only two remaining um both who stare at each other and then proceed to dash off as well. It's worth saying one, the one with the hammer did fall in that combat as well. So after just a minute or two, you're left with the corpses of numerous vicious looking beast men in front of you and Kresok at your feet. The entire stunned village and Klaus kneeling there, weeping tears of somewhat joy now uh, at his sudden salvation. Everyone's staring in shock. I... Now then, yeah, I'll uh, I'll reach down, and I presume I ended up seeing the symbol, the, the yeah. hammer symbol in the end. 
Mm -hmm. um, so it's worth, I think it's worth saying as you are standing over Kresok, uh, the beast in front of you is clearly a corrupted creature. Um, mm -hmm. It's it smells and it's kind of disgusting. Um, you can obviously grab stuff off it. I'm just saying. It's, you could say the same about any of us. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Um, Are you wearing gloves? Yeah, you I think so. I yeah, think you're fine. So, yeah. You're fine. Go for it. Um, so yeah, I'd want to um, take the um, the symbol. I'm presuming yeah. it's not on a really expensive chain or anything no, like that. No. It looks like it's um, silver, but the chain itself just looks like a simple yeah. metal chain, and it is. Uh, it is indeed a silver hammer of Sigma. Uh, well, I will. I will sort of rip that off the uh, the throat of the uh, the corpse. The, the, it's still dying. Kresok is still dying beneath you. They, they are not completely dead, and as you rip it, they kind of, with their good hand, kind of come up to try and grip you, but there's little strength left in it, and you can see the eyes kind of rolling back as they go, uh, no, oh, trying to stop you. Uh, you could end it right now if you wanted, or say something. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll um, deliver a, a quick mm -hmm. killing blow. Yep, absolutely. Uh, a quick blade in the throat, and the, uh, the beast is dead. And I will return the symbol to, or I'll hold it out to, uh, was it, it was Klaus, wasn't it? Klaus, yeah. And I'll say uh, the symbol of your god. Uh, Klaus glances up briefly, and just shakes his head, quivering, and doesn't doesn't move to take it or look at you. Gonna be dusting Klaus off. No hard feelings, eh, chap? <laughs> He's not really reacting. I guess if, if he's not taking it, I'll uh, uh, pocket it for the moment and then uh, then blow the candle out because that's still that's still good. That's you know got that is <laughs> that's got like, got like uh, forty minutes <laughs> left. Is it? Yeah. Is is anyone else doing anything like that they want to do fairly quickly, or is it kind of just checking around, seeing what's going on? There? John, I'm as I'm over there going to search the the remains of this stable for whatever I find. Sure. Uh, as in, you're looking for whether the, the Ongor is still there. Yes. Um, give me a perception. Okay. This is kind of a little, a little in the past from what happened. This is kind of a check I'm allowing you to make just as the fight was going on and Kresok was dying and all that. Uh, uh, what? Any modifier? Ooh, no, it's still challenging, so no modifier. No, don't make it. Okay. Uh, you don't see anything in them when you're when you're kind of looking and heading over there while this fight is kind of ending. Um, and a few moments later, you find yourself at the uh, ruined stables, and you see, after a moment, you do see mucky tracks um, in the uh, in the kind of ground below there. Someone's clearly been standing there, or some creature has been standing there for a time, um, and then uh, they dashed off not long ago. It looks like, but it's very difficult to follow those tracks. You could have a go though. You get rendered to help if you like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I'm going to do that. Okay, sounds good. Uh, you call Rinder over, and I will let you make an animal training. Training? Training, yeah, I make an animal training role for that. Another challenging one. It's pretty tough, but you can have a go. And we'll move on to see if anyone else is doing anything while you're doing that. Um, is anyone else searching the dead, going to talk with others in the group? Got any other plans? Nope. I mean, if there was, uh, if that hammer mm -hmm. looked reasonable, yeah, sure, um, sure, I'd sort of, uh, you know, bring it over, see whether it's serviceable, show it to Okri, yeah. perhaps, and uh, mm -hmm. I feel like Okri was interested in that too, right? So I imagine you both kind of. I'm, I'm in. I'm not going to use the hammer mm -hmm. because I'm quite, you know, attached to mine that I made myself. Mm. Um, but I would be potentially interested in it from a resale point of view mm -hmm. i'm going to be looking for things that are worth money yep on absolutely them. absolutely it's worth saying that uh kruger or when you look at the hammer uh oh, kruger you're like this is really fine craftsmanship perhaps even dwarven craftsmanship okri you take one glance and you go this is dwarven craftsmanship this is just <laughs> human craftsmanship. this doesn't even doesn't even come close it's up to you whether you say it or not <laughs> made in reichland yeah a little stamp yeah a little bit um, Okri, okay, so uh, you have a look around Kresok probably first. 
um, being that they're right in front of you. Um, the creature has uh, looks like a pouch with something shiny in it. Uh, and otherwise, it's kind of just fetid, disgusting garb and some old metal bracelets and things. Maybe the staff could be of interest, but it's a, it's a strange, perhaps uh, mystical in a, in a a not a way you would want to handle. Um, uh, but the only other thing, as I say, that pouch of, of shinies. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Are you barehanded? <laughs> I mean, you can't all uh, say you're wearing gloves. I don't mind, but... Bonifast doesn't wear gloves. What do you, you think go. is likely? What does the art say? Ah, true, true. The um, art says no gloves, ah, Barakri, I'm afraid. Right, okay. Guess I'm barehanded then. <laughs> uh, I think case... It wouldn't make sense for you to wear probably gloves when you're working. But... Yeah, but I'm not working now. No, true. yeah. So. But I'm going to have uh, a... This is purely for pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> just, just as a note, I do have magic resistance. Uh, uh, in, it's uh, endurance you're rolling. Okay. It's an easy check. So plus 40. I think you're probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I said what my endurance was earlier, I'd missed the five that I'd put into it. So it's actually 53. So 93. Yep. I just rolled 91. <laughs> oh. Anyone else would you're have fine. You're fine. You're um, fine. Okay. <laughs> as you pick up, as you pick up the, uh, the pouch and you find inside 15 silver shillings, which is very nice. Um, but you also yep. that's significantly <laughs> increased your finances. Um, uh, Body fast is going to be actually like. Ugh. I think it's twenty. <laughs> yeah, I think it's twenty uh, pennies for a shilling, so that's pretty good. Um, is it not twenty? Something like that. Uh, John, it's can that. Um, twelve. Yeah, oh, twelve yeah, pennies for a shilling. Twenty shillings for a gold shillings piece. For gold, thank you. And uh, I had ten pennies before, so <laughs> <laughs> exponential wow. increase, one could say. Yeah, Okri, um, it's worth noting as well, and Boniface was exactly correct in that. the The pouch is stinky and disgusting and fetid. Um, you feel like uh, certainly that this could be a disease-ridden cloth of some sort. I'll certainly mm. empty them out, and you even kind of want to wash the coins if you can, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any like holy water around? Is that a thing? In <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's totally. I a think Bonifast is going to want to literally like he's going to be so repulsed by this. He's going to try and like wash Kruger's hands mm -hmm. like, after he's touched things. Like sure, sure. you know, like like you know. Well, Kruger is currently handling the uh, the the hammer with gloves on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm probably going to just like almost slosh. <laughs> <laughs> with, with his water, <laughs> you know, like He's running over and, and, and like, sucking. like, sir, you what? can't, you can't touch that. <laughs> it just, it's evil. It's what evil. What weapon does Kruger currently have? A sword. Uh, yes, a sword. it was just a hand weapon, though. Correct. I think. Oh uh, yes, it was. It was a, a, a hand weapon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so that... I, yeah, I think I think if Okri sees Kruger handling the hammer, mm -hmm. he'll kind of. It's not. It's not the best, but probably an improvement for you if you can handle it well. Question. And oh, we can do this off air, I guess. But is it still a... a um... It is a special weapon, in fact. It is a special yeah. weapon, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. We can talk about it later. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's two-handed is what it counts under. Right. I don't have a skill for that. Yeah. Well, let me we'll check it. We can talk about it later. Yeah. You're not planning on wielding it right now. Um, yeah, so uh, there's. I imagine people are having a look around. The others, all the other creatures, just have kind of unpleasant-looking things of beastman creation. Nothing valuable. You don't notice any other coins or anything. Um, so a quick inspection won't show anything else. I'd like to role play the moment when Boniface splashes Kruger with water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I think I've got like a cup and just thrust it over and try to like grab Kruger's hands, <laughs> wash it off. Get off, for heaven's sakes! God, sorry. You, can't, you Look, shouldn't touch it, Kruger. This is uh, stinking. Then, then take it to the river and wash it. Then, I here. No, I will literally <laughs> jump back. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I might scoop it up in some clothes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like you know, I'm not All touching good. this thing. All good. All good. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> Uh, How much so... are candles worth? 
it's not a human made candle. It's just like a gross. weird. It's a gross kind of, candle. Yeah, okay. fat with with yeah. like hair sticking out the top. Oh, yeah, okay. it's not nice. Um, back to Henrik. How did you do on that roll? Uh, if it was a flat roll, then I failed. Okay, it if was there was a flat literally roll. any modifier to it, then I passed. It was a challenging roll. So uh, you you head into the forest, following Rinda. Rinda kind of takes you in circles for a while, and you're not really sure. Rinda's got a scent. You're kind of like, I'm not. I don't think this is really going anywhere. You can't really find mm -hmm. any tracks. But while you're there, give me a challenging perception roll. No, I'd say a normal perception roll. So plus twenty. Okay. Since you're in the area and you've been following. That is, I had target of thirty-two. I rolled forty-nine. So one success level. Okay. You, after a bit of time, maybe the others are starting to wonder where you've gone by this point, a, bit, a little bit worried about you, but uh, you find on the floor something very strange looking. Uh, it looks just like a piece of like leather or something when you first see it, um, but it stands out to you as being odd. And then you uh, pick it up uh, and you flip it over to look at it, um, and it looks like an Angor's face, but it's not like a weird severed head face or something from a battle it's got eye holes and like it was made you immediately come to the conclusion that something was clearly pretending to be an ungor oh rats 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 are small oh yeah, i'm not here but <laughs> this is definitely a mask are there any traces of anything on the inside of the mask? Anything left by the wearers? Perhaps as, some fur? As you flip it over, you know that it doesn't look like it was made for a human face. Perhaps a face with more of a snout. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'd say there's probably some fur in there. Some some dark, manky-looking fur. What, what's the big deal? A small things. A moustache. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeez, you know. Henry, I'll, you can have your shocked harsh. moment in the forest and then join the party when you're ready. Feel free to just butt in at your arrival, okay? <laughs> um, so the rest of the group are kind of at the temple. Um, uh, kind of, you've gathered all your stuff. Uh, everyone else is kind of, everyone has come up now from the cellar and is looking around. And I think Elsa is like, come over to tap Kruger on the shoulder and go, good work. The beast is dead. I think we're free of this. I hope so. I, I think we were lucky. Well, if that truly was what brought it upon us, then this should all be over, right? <laughs> if Father Stillman is somewhere... Yeah, I think around. everyone's baby with an earshot yeah. the other characters as well, other than Henrik for the moment. I think you'd, you'd possibly see Kruger sort of glance in Father Stillman's direction briefly. Mm-hmm. Father Stillman is looking at you with a dark expression, but kind of, well, right. you don't get much else from him. <sighs> Let us hope so. Um, they are not to be trusted. Um, and just as you're having this conversation, the, uh, the sun just crests over the hills you can see above the trees nearby. Um, and the rain has finally abated. And it's kind of a, a blustery, cloudy day. Uh, starting above you this dawn as light finally returns to the uh, the glade of the villages in. I think we'll make good progress today, sir, on the road. <laughs> Fine weather for walking. Where where were you headed? Says Rorak. Uh, Do you want a hand? I on map. Let me zoom yeah. in a bit. <laughs> it was it was, it was yeah, Grunberg. Grunberg. There Grunberg. we go. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that was where you were thinking of getting a boat. Yes. Uh, yes, we were, we were uh, aiming to travel to, to, to Grunberg, but... Uh, well, do you think... Uh, do you think everything is... Is, is all right here now? I mean, where, where is the... Where is the... Um, the people that, that were supposed to be Lord protecting you. Baron Helsconecht, this is uh, Elsa. Well, if I could leave this place, I would head to Grunberg myself. He's one of the lords of Grunberg. Some questions for him now after what I've been hearing. But I don't think I'd be much inclined to abandon Wala at this time. 
not with all the work we have to do. If you're heading that way, you could do a favor and, well, at least ask around. I know it's a lot, I suppose, getting involved in all this. I think I definitely have some questions for Lord Helsnecht. This is Henrik just appearing. <laughs> yes. Just gliding in. <laughs> like with a face in his hat. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Okay, good, good. No, the mask is nowhere to be seen. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, Klaus, who's standing next to Elsa, physically jumps when you, when you arrive. <laughs> um, uh, Elsa turns and goes, yes? What? Something else you know? No. Well, Just curious. It would be most... I'd be most grateful. There's uh, some unanswered questions, I think, here still. If you ever come back this way, I really want to hear what's going on. Maybe you could send a messenger if you... That's probably asking too much. Never mind. I'm sure we can... Uh... We can pass on what we know. Um, for, for your help as well, if there's anything you want to take from the village, there's not much we have to spare, obviously, but weapons or the like. Keep keep what you've taken here. That shield is yours if you want it, and the, the sword. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, here, you you, uh, you might want this, and I will pass uh, Elsa the um, uh, uh, Sigma symbol. Mm -hmm. Um she hesitates before taking it having seen where it came from as well um but she does take it and then she looks at it and goes feels more a curse than a blessing now doesn't it i suppose a curse that has passed think of it as a a reminder perhaps of what can be if uh, the wrong decisions are taken Everyone turns to look at Klaus. <laughs> what did he do? Rorak, uh, after having this after this brief conversation, goes on and goes, I well, if you're all headed to Runeberg, wasn't exactly our direction, but I don't feel like traveling alone. Mind the company? Not at all. You're very welcome to... Uh... To join us. Behind the other woman comes up and goes, better than this place now. Yeah, what stakes the uh, the tavern in? <laughs> the, the, it had two floors. The top one is burned and gone. The bottom one seems mostly intact. Yikes. That was where all our stuff was. <laughs> <laughs> My broom! Uh, you we didn't your, have that much you've stuff. you got your stuff. It's My fine. broom! <laughs> Did Kruger um, get his hat back? <laughs> I, did, did Bonnie Fast save that? I, if it was at all possible, then yes. Oh yeah, I think that's fair. It was possible. You might you could put the <laughs> put the hat inside the temple when they were rushing inside. Yeah, perhaps Bonnie is really well trained to mm -hmm. if, if wherever I leave my hat, Bonnie Fast. <laughs> <laughs> the whole mind off like Bonnie Fast was in the corner guarding the hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, while you're as well, I'll look, quite, quite a few people are coming out of the temple. It seems there were a lot more. There was a lot more space in that cellar than you knew. Um, and there's a good 30 or 40 people um, coming out of there. Perhaps even much of the village has survived, certainly a significant proportion, maybe perished in this, but they seemed relatively well prepared and with your help managed to uh, fend off this attack. Is there anything else you want to do before you leave the village? Presumably you're heading out fairly quickly, but I don't mind if you're not. Given I don't think anyone was particularly wounded, were they? Just one point from falling masonry, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'd taken one point of damage. Yeah, from one. So something. not noticeable. A, a mild bruise, that's all. You're fine. Yeah. As long as I think it was food. jumping off the, the pulpit when it was charged and, yeah. I don't know, uh, twinging my ankle or something. If you're thinking of food, Boniface, they have some stocks. Yeah, the, yeah. Just the, enough to get us to You can Grimsburg. grab some without any particular. Yeah. Grimberg's about another two days walking from here. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. a, bit, a bit of food, a bit of water. Mm -hmm. And we've got the equipment that we've already seized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So make notes of stuff that people have picked up. Um, cool. So, go on. I would like to do one sweep of the temple. Um, 
to block up any possible small holes in the masonry. <laughs> Just to keep it, you know, extra secure. You get some looks from people who are, who are <laughs> kind of wondering what you're doing, given the door is kind of completely blown in. And there's also kind of <laughs> like the windows are, are like, you know, bars <laughs> rather wow. than glass. So things could just crawl in through there, but no one stops you. <laughs> that's that's where you'd expect them to crawl in, though. <laughs> uh, uh, Henrik, did you did you I guess the t distraction was a little too short. Did you find that? Uh creature you were no the, uh... oh. it had um, uh, fled before I reached it perhaps that's for the best yes probably was just too much of a coward for the rest of the group to to accept thrown out for being some kind of weakling so yes I think uh, we can we can move on and move towards our travels there. Excellent. So on the road, you're now traveling out of um, the village. You, uh, Rorak, and you find out the uh, dwarven woman is called Bronda, and she is a gem crafter by trade. I imagine there is some conversation in that perhaps okri is a little interested in that i suppose but generally you you get along quite well with them okri actually you've probably already don't like rorak a bit he's not particularly you don't really like rorak very much he's a bit uh he's not very dwarfy <laughs> he spent too much not, time yeah, with not, traders, i think um, not my type of guy yeah but bronda she's yeah she's you like bronda she's uh she's one generation removed from the mountain <laughs> so you feel uh you can feel your roots there you know yeah um anyway uh henrik did you choose to mention anything at all on the road even in secret or is this entirely yours to keep you don't talk about this kind of thing out loud so i'm sorry it should be <laughs> what time uh, nothing perfect I love it. <laughs> so in that case um i had planned this because i wanted to have a bit of a chat about it that is the end of our session effectively um, because I was going to do a bit of XP and level up chats. And I was going to do a, oh. the journey to Grunberg is peaceful and quiet. You have no trouble staying in inns. Um, in fact, word has already traveled by the time you reach the next village to stay for the night. Um, and they give you free board and food there. So that food you took didn't even be, wasn't even needed for that night. Um, uh, but you arrive in Grunberg the day after that evening. It's a large, uh, town with high wooden walls, um, and it's on the river. Oh, I can't remember the name of the one of the rivers, one of the tributaries of the Reich is nearby this area. Um, it is uh, kind of the, one of the centers in Reichland for uh, boat building. So this is one of the reasons you thought it might be a good place to get a boat on the journey. Mm. But now you have perhaps other things to consider while you're here. A moment first, anyway. But it's a place to restock, consider your options, sell some things perhaps, and look to see what else you can do. And I think it's also time to consider some XP. Exciting. Wonderful, wonderful XP. So uh, you all will get. Uh, did you have fun? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you had okay. fun, you get. If you had fun, you get 100 XP. What? Okay. What are you doing? Uh, Is this player uh, or character? <laughs> 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 Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 50 to the play, 50 to the play. No. <laughs> uh, did you save the Tanner family? Well, you saved two thirds of the Tanner family. That's two thirds of the oh, experience right. points. Thank that you very much. So you saved two thirds okay. of them. So that would be, uh, given it spread over the two sessions, I'll give you 20 XP for that. Uh, okay. Old Hob, not really, because it was a healing role and none of you could heal. But Henrik did succeed at a help to heal, which was the guy who was wounded. So I'm going to say you get an extra 15 XP each for having that old man and wow. doing all the healing stuff, which is kind of just there, um, Henrik. Uh, 100 XP for each for defeating Kresok. And here I was going to give over Klaus. And 30 <laughs> XP each for having Klaus not die. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I was about to ask how I don't need to get the correct glass down the tree. And now we get the standard per session, because it does say give this, give this on top hmm. per session XP. Wow. So you get a lot of XP into this. Um, you will level up quite a lot of this, I suspect. Um, but now I've completely lost my page. So if anyone knows where the leveling up section is in the main book, let me know. At least what? At least somewhere between page one and a hundred. Oh, is it between adventures? Typical Boniface yeah, help there. I guess I haven't achieved my short-term objective of getting back in crew with good books. I don't <laughs> think you have. No. Yeah, that's right. We should talk about about objectives as well. Swinging your ship. Sure. Honestly, I was, yeah. it was helping. A lot of it's towards journeying, isn't it? Uh, why is this hard to find? Advancement, 43? Ah, that makes Maybe. sense. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's in the character creation. That's right, not in the Between Adventures. Um, of yeah. course. What is it? <laughs> 43. Um, I mean, that gives you... There we go. Got it. So, uh, XP. So, after... This is how much XP you get. <laughs> Gosh darn it. It doesn't say it for a session, though, does it? There is a section where it says... Yeah, I swear I've seen it at some point. Sorry, folks. Perhaps it's in the... <laughs> yeah, I thought it would be in the other section at the end of the game rules, but I can find it there. I've definitely seen it at some point. Me too. It's something like 100 XP per session. Something it like might that. even be before page 40-something, because mm. there's some... I think it is very early on where they talk about it. Hmm. I think it's in the game rules section. If anyone knows in chat <laughs> what page, <laughs> uh, maybe I can just do it between sessions. Between That's sorry, adventures. Kind of wanted. Yeah, I've just been looking at that section. I just wanted everyone to be excited about how much XP they had, and we could have a quick conversation. I'm about very it. excited about yeah. it. Let me I mean, be it's... very clear. Because yeah, the leveling up is quite cool cool within your career and all that. I need to burn. No, not finding it. Um... Oh well. Um, I'm gonna say off the cuff because it seems fair we played four sessions and you've got extra xp so 50 xp per session so let's say 200 xp on top of that which i think is a bit cheaper than the standard per session rate but also you've already had loads of other xp so how much was that in total lots uh, awarding oh, experience know. points yeah. page 264 yeah thank you sorry my apologies for being so slow my lord oh uh, slow, the slow to help and quick to start a fight. Uh, I counted it as 465, but okay, yeah, that sounds pretty good. There we go. Really? Yeah. So it's it's normal sessions as a oh, normal session, mm -hmm. um, and you've kind of done a little end of adventure thing. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with my my 50 per session because you got all the other bonus stuff. So we'll stick with that. 465 uh, sounds like a cool. And how many sessions was it? Four. Four. No. Four. Three. Three. Four. No, this is fourth. Yeah, you're right. I'm thinking yeah. three and then the one. Yeah. Four. So you're saying 465? Yeah. That's, that's what, what I I'm, counted yeah, it that's to. That's what I've yeah. got to as well. Good. Good. You have some XP to spend. Nice. What sort of stuff are people thinking of staying in their careers? Because this is like a, a story-based oh, yeah. thing now. So oh, that you've yeah. arrived in Grunberg, and now you have an opportunity to kind of... There's a bit of time perhaps spent there, a little bit of recovery time, but also perhaps a bit of time to spend a bit of money and work on yourselves, perhaps work a bit as well, make a bit more money. So. It's interesting to consider what you might be doing in that time. I think I know exactly what Hendrick's doing. <laughs> we can talk more about that next session, don't worry. Although it would be fun. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going to say it now. We'll, we'll do it next session. I was thinking, what's Henrik going to do first thing arriving? But oh, mm. oh, I want to give you some time to... <laughs> uh, the mask, by the way, is staying safe at the bottom of Henrik's bags. That's perfectly reasonable. Right. <laughs> uh what cool can anyone get cool new stuff then? I mean, that's got to be putting you pretty close to advancement to the next level, I imagine, for some folks, eh? Is I've that enough? To... I've forgotten how much it is per... Oh, yeah. That's on page 40. To, um, to advance in a career, I think it's like 100 XP. Mm -hmm. Completing a career, you must have the number of advances listed below in all your career levels, characteristics, and in eight of your career levels available skills. So it's five advances. In each of That's what three. I'm planning on doing, yeah. at, at, at least. Hmm. Um, so I think that, yeah, and then you can get to your next career level, which I think takes a bit of XP. So you'll, yeah, you should be able to do it, and then you can get cool new stuff from then on, can't you? And then you're officially a practicing smith as well, if you do that into your group. 
it's pretty exciting. <laughs> oh, interesting. So yeah, so I guess I'm going to be playing around with this uh, this hammer. Hmm. Seeing if, you if get I can ne next level, does it give you two-handed? Uh, well, it gives you so uh, soldier, which is uh, the second level. Um, mm -hmm. You get to choose uh, from the skills. Do you get all of the skills, or do you choose? No, some you, of the skills? you can. So that you, you, when you get use extra XP points, you can now choose to put them in any of the skills gotcha, of those right. levels. So you can put them in soldier or what the one buff recruit, whatever gotcha. it is. So all of those are now available to you. That's what the level up gives. Um, you. So that allows me to put points into melee any or ranged any, which yeah. So you would could put a melee two-handed now if you want. Yeah. So it sounds like I'd have to level up, and then I would be able to. Uh... If you put even one point into melee any, that means you can now use that. Right. So that's a perfectly reasonable option. Sure. Uh, what are you going to say, something, John? Nope. Cool. Sorry, you you had a look of. Hmm. <laughs> He's still not sure about mask. that or something there. <laughs> Anyone else got something exciting? They're like, oh, I'm going to level up and get this thing. Not currently. I think I need to do all my level up stuff off oh, off camera. That's perfectly fine. I'm not asking you to level up now. It's more just a conversational thing of what your career it's... is. There anything in your career you were looking forward to getting, or you know, stuff like that. I mean, because... uh, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, all good. All good. I am looking forward to uh, the other talent that I didn't take at character creation: is disease resistance. Seems like that it does would come like handy it. so far. Yeah. I feel like I should probably have developed it with the amount of time I've spent in the sewers. Uh, uh, yeah, it might come in like quite relevant. There's actually a lot of disease in this game. Like, mm. oh, great. I was looking at it, I was like, all of the beastmen have disease? Okay. And then um, lots of other things do too. <laughs> <laughs> That's something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, I'm still just enjoying Boniface's scene of washing down the hammer frantically <laughs> in, the, in the river, just like yeah, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, or in the font of the church. I mean, like, <laughs> uh, gosh. I'll be getting my guild license and trade tools, which is quite exciting and could be <laughs> fun to. I suppose you know maybe that's when we arrive at yeah. I've forgotten what it was called already. Thingyberg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Perhaps I'm I go like... and apply for. Um, you know, completion of my yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, what I'm planning on. I was kind of it was either going to tag on the end of this session, depending how long we last. So, but I thought it was going to take longer than that. So next session, I'm planning on beginning at least with kind of a, a montage of little scenes, maybe or just like um, stuff because the advancement yes. in this game I quite like it to be story based a little bit. Mm, so we're going to have sure. like talking yeah. about how you've got your points. So Kruger using the hammer, Ockry doing the you know going to the guild and applying, and maybe like spending a day smithing something for them. We'll do this. yeah. That'll be good. Yeah, I think Boniface is just going to get more good at skills mm -hmm. because they they can be more useful. It, basically, until the point where Kruger gets is visibly displeased that Boniface <laughs> hasn't yet got livery and graduated <laughs> from being a you know like like general dog's body to being a servant, a proper servant. Oh. I'll tell you what, I might, the livery stuff might well come in relevant now you're in Grunberg, to be fair. So Yeah, oh, I, okay. I mean, that'll be, that's where I get to find X advancement. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, that, I, I mean, until then, Boniface is happy being a kind of like grubby, <laughs> like, <laughs> kitchen boy style sure. servant. <laughs> until Kruger becomes displeased. Is Kruger right, ever okay. pleased? <laughs> for moments, I mean, given, moments. given Boniface's performance during this session, I'm not particularly surprised at Kruger's lack of being pleased. <laughs> I did everything I was told. <laughs> was... <laughs> really? Yes, yes. And yeah, I did everything I was told and I went above above and beyond. Right. When did, hang on, when did we say, oh, start a fight immediately? Like that well, is the most Henrik important thing. Henrik said Drop it. everything. I said, <laughs> keep him talking. Well, casting yeah, magic talking. and screaming at you is not talking. That's tired as kind of talking for a beast right. man. Okay. What would you expect? He doesn't, <laughs> he's not, he doesn't have like cups of tea and like you your, know, sit around and talk about the weather. Was, clearly, I'm going to insult this furious monster. <laughs> so, talking, I, but no spells. 
I thought he would obey his his candle rule. Like, what was I to know? <laughs> he wasn't. Like, I, you know, he lit a candle with magic. I thought that kind of thing is a serious promise. Uh, you know, you can't break candle right. magic promises. It's like pinky promises. I love that this is going on in the tavern in the evening. You've just arrived in your <laughs> conversation. Yeah, nice. Well, we've uh, learned that beastmen don't respect candles. Yeah. If they, if they don't respect candles, candles, what else don't they respect? <laughs> That's all I can say about that. Uh, cool. Well, I think we'll end the session there then. So, <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, thanks very much for joining in fun. with this, this madness. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> Uh, once again, a uh, combat with few to no wounds. And to be fair, that was actually not meant to be as tough a combat as the other two. I can't believe you made it through with basically no wounds from all three, though. I um, I didn't know what to make of that. I, I was kind of thinking it might be... Yes. He did Brown slightly Trousers melt time. a bit, didn't he? Yeah, well, well, he had three spells that he could have used. And I started him with the most, by far the most dangerous. But I decided to give you an extra countdown on it because... It was a bit unfair to just fire on you immediately. And I was mm. like, if you can hit him in this round before um, and then he make, fails his um, uh, endurance, he won't get the cast. And that's what happened. Um, so you stopped him. But that, I can't remember. I'll look and tell people what that cast would have been now because he's dead. Um, that cast would have been. Um, yeah, he would, he would have cast a flame breath spell, which would have basically just set fire to the whole building. Um, with you inside it, or most of well, the other okay. people inside it, uh, wow. aiming it directly at Klaus and Boniface. So, uh, that was his intention. Um, and it wouldn't have killed you immediately. You'd just be, oh, everyone You'd have would have been, been ablaze, basically, have the several, ablaze condition. Wow. <laughs> several turns to burn to death. Thanks, yeah, Boniface. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I decided to give you, give you a, a moment to react, and you did appropriately. <laughs> and then he cast Treason of Zinch, which actually just kind of messes with you, but I gave it a higher level, so it was it was mm. he was able to control you. Um, but I, did, I did everything required. You get endurance against it, so uh, willpower. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. We we'll uh, need to e talk about when that even, when e even with the willpower, if you tried to hit him, you still would have like done like very little because like okay. all of your bonuses would have gone. Even few. Okay. Um, but you did hit him, but it still didn't have so much of an effect. So, um, but it didn't matter because he had like one health left by that point. Mm. So <laughs> uh, you were all good. Um, but yeah, he was pretty badass. Anyway, I was going to wrap up. So mm -hmm. thanks very much for joining us, folks. Uh, that was real fun. Uh, we're telling tales. We do stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, and we have stuff below like Discord and, Twi and Twitter and other links to things. Um, yeah, go check those out. We also do other weekly series as well as Warhammer. Do Into the Odd on Wednesdays and uh, World of Darkness on Thursdays, which is not on this week. Um, and there's a one shot coming up in a couple of weeks with Lake Mert 4. We do those every month. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ooh, uh, and oh, oh, things to say. Oh, we should do question and comments too. I just skipped over them as well. <laughs> Let's do questions um, and comments and thank you, people. Oops. <laughs> yes. Sorry, guys. John. Thank you for the resub from Nightbites and some nerd called John. <laughs> I don't, um, don't know. Who that thank is. you for the follow from Chris Jess85. I love so how we I ask had. any comments or questions for our noble heroes in the chat. You got to catch me. I mean, you did catch me with your hand. To be fair, I, I did. I was just ready to bugger off. Any comments? I mean, this nah. is the one that I really liked. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you need to be less less hold backing with this this backhand. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, at this point, dear. he's almost got you all killed. That's pretty. That's pretty bad. I mean, he didn't really, did he? Didn't, did I? I mean, I mean, there was a plan of. Well, well if everyone had gone with my idea of just throwing Klaus to the top to the wolves, then none of this would have happened. Well, yeah, what would have happened? Less experience points. <laughs> do, do you yeah. want to know? <laughs> I mean, it can't have been pretty. Yeah. If if you'd had him embraced like father if you'd and son, handed to him, they, they you would literally have hugged him and eaten his throat out, and wow. then proceeded to immediately attack you. All. Like like father and son, <laughs> as I said, you would have had a brief moment to try and kill him. Similarly, right. when he was casting, while okay. he was eating the throat out, and that would have been it. <laughs> cool. I think you know that's that that's nature in it, beast men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, doing the grim thing is a good good yeah. shout though. To be fair, that's a pretty good idea. 
<clears throat> cool. Yeah. That's everything. Anything else? Oh, okay, cool, cool. Okay, now the one, real wrapping up this mm. time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for watching, folks. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Are you doing the button again? Or? I don't know. I'll do the button. Every time. No professional. <laughs>